You say you wanna set the world alight. I'm just trying to live my life. Ideally, you don't wanna get yourself uh, too out of shape because you know you start pounding and, and the impact on the hard grounds. If you if you can a bit of excessive timber, you know it's not great for your joints. Um, but ideally, yeah, if, if you haven't done any sort of work, I recommend maybe doing some off-feet work, some on the rower or the bikes, just to build up a little bit of a, a baseline aerobic fitness uh, without too much stress. And then moving on, you know, to some more progressive uh, running type drills. We've gone away from doing a lot of long distance endurance type running now. It's a lot more sort of high intensity interval based training uh, where we work for quite high intensity for short periods of time uh, with a bit of recovery and then go again. Uh, but again, depending on your base level of fitness, you know, it's how quickly you progress and, and what sort of distances you start at really. Uh, we use one method, we do the 1500 metre run. Um, and that gives us a baseline values and we calculate the players running distances off the back of that. Um, but one of the good running sessions we do is we do a, a 15 second interval run uh, with 15 second recoveries and you can start off with eight, eight reps of that. Um, so you do 15 seconds work, 15 second rest, do that eight times, so four minutes is a set, three minutes rest and you can repeat that two to three times again depending on your fitness levels. Distance wise again it's hard to say for a, a total novice but maybe start again at maybe 70 metres distance for your 15 seconds. And if you find that comfortable, just build it up by five metres each time you do the run. Uh, recommend that maybe two to three times a week, and that's a real good way of getting getting quite fit, quite quick, um, and relatively safe. Yeah, again, obviously everyone, everyone's time constraint is going to be different, but I'd say if you can do three good, three of those type of sessions, um, three good sessions a week, then you can get some good results. Um, again, with the lads, we look a lot with their recovery and their lifestyle mm -hmm. factors as well. So make sure you've got a good, healthy diet and uh, you're getting plenty of sleep. Um, also, we incorporate a little bit of um, sort of speed type training, speed and agility stuff on top of our on top of aerobic work, um, just to start building those qualities quite early on. Because obviously, once the players go into games, they're going to be expected to. Uh, to sprint and be able to change direction, so it's important we incorporate some of that type of work in the sessions as well. Obviously the, the players are going from being quite sedentary during the off-season, so they will be doing some sort of training, um, but only normally like one session a day, um, you know, maybe four sessions a week, five sessions a week maximum, and then they're coming back to pre-season uh, where they might be doing three or four double sessions a week, maybe you know, a total of eight or nine sessions. So the amount of work they're doing, that's volume of work has increased. So we try and increase their, their calorie, preferably their, their protein and maybe their carbohydrate intake as well, just to meet the demands of that, that excessive sort of training we're doing. Um, like I say, you might have one or two that come back that need to, to lose a couple of pounds and we might have to modify theirs a little bit differently. But generally, obviously, because their energy demand's gone up, obviously they need to have uh, the right food and, and nutrients to sort of make up for that as well. Again, when you're training full time like the pros, it's a very fine balance um, on the scales between training enough and overdoing it. So it's something we work really hard on trying to monitor through different uh, different methods and tools that we use to make sure we're not actually overtraining because it's quite easily done. Um, but for a general player, an athlete who's maybe training three days a week, still important. Um, but the chances of overtraining or burnout are obviously a lot less. Um, so yeah, but many of the right things you can do in terms of your lifestyle, sleep. Uh, making sure you know when you're doing your training sessions you're well hydrated you know just having a bottle of water with you um, and I say after training make sure you're getting your carbs and proteins back on board often the players or people that try and do too much too quick either result in injury or you'll get fatigued you know get fatigued or burnt out early on in the season so yes so we've talked about having a short short period where we get the players fit um, but we try and try and make it nice and progressive throughout the season. It's not just first week, hit you as hard as we can until you drop. Um, I think that sort of old, old school mentality is probably hopefully um, dwindling away a little bit now. Um, so try and avoid, let's say, a lot of time run, you know, long distance runs for you know, 35, 40 minutes of just continuous running. Um, so we try and avoid those type of runs now and just work for shorter periods of time but with, with higher intensity. Um, and just better say build it up nice and gradually over your five week periods. Don't try and do everything in the first week um, and it will result in injury. Just